The Tour de France is the biggest bike race of the year, and the teams bring out some of the fastest, most expensive, and gorgeous bikes that you'll see all season. But which bikes do you really need to look out for at the Tour de France? Well, we've picked out five that deserve your attention with one bike that could go into the history books. Before we get to the bikes, remember to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell icon so that you can see our Tour de France videos before anyone else. We'll start with the new and still quite mysterious Canyon Aerode of Alpecin de Koenig's Matthew van der Poel. The Dutchman has already piloted his updated Canyon Aerode to wins in Milan San Remo and Paris Roubaix, two incredibly different and difficult races to win. For now, the only thing that we know about the new design is there are one or two changes to the seat post clamp arrangement. What else Canyon has changed remains a closely guarded secret. That said, we've been able to deduce one or two other big changes as Van der Poel's setup from Paris-Roubaix told us something very crucial. The Dutchman started the race on 28mm tubeless Vittoria Corsa Pro tyres, but took a quiet moment, by Paris-Roubaix standards, to make a quick bike change. Photos from the famous velodrome finish suggest that Van der Poel finished the race on 32mm tyres. Now, given that the current model only has space for 30mm tyres, officially, it's possible that Canyon has increased the clearance in this updated model. What we do know is that the bike is decked out in a 12-speed Shimano Dura-Ace Di2 group set with the Japanese brand's range of top-spec wheels. It's very tasty. Given that the Cervelo S5 is the bike of the reigning Tour de France champion as well as last year's green jersey winner, we think it's fair to assume that we'll be seeing a lot of the S5 this year too. Being a super speedy aero machine, it would be wrong to continue without talking about its aero credentials. The S5 is said to offer a 65 gram reduction in aerodynamic drag versus the previous generation, which it replaced last year. While that isn't a metric that we often hear used, if you do crunch the numbers, it equates to around 8.45 watts at 48 kilometers per hour or 30 miles per hour all things else being equal. Some of this saving, Cervelo claims, can be attributed to the updated frame tube profiles, including a deeper head tube and bottom bracket area, and more aggressive shaping on the trailing edges of the tubes. The fork was also given a new aerodynamic nose, which protrudes forward of the head tube to control airflow. Another feature that theoretically aids aerodynamics is the front derailleur mount, that's now removable, giving riders the option of running a cleaner one-byte drivetrain setup. In fact, this year's Paris-Roubaix saw the majority of riders from both the men's and women's Jumbo Visma squads using a one-byte setup. Primoz Roglic then used a one-byte setup for two crucial summit finishes in the Giro, and Vingegaard was spotted using one on flat stages of the Dauphiné. So this could be something that we see in the Tour de France. But the S5 isn't all about aero. Space for 34mm tyres means that you could make this a relatively comfortable machine, potentially saving the riders precious energy. Jumbo Visma finished their bikes with physique saddles, with the riders having the freedom to choose anything from the Italian brand's range. Likely to be fighting it out for the overall victory, UAE Team Emirates' Tade Pogacar has a bike spec many, many of you will drool over. His Colnago V4 RS has been designed as a fully integrated system, and it initially featured the CC01 integrated bar that first appeared on the C68. In fact, Pogacar has now swapped over to the MV SES aero bar and matching stem, though when you have a personal watch sponsor, you can get away with a bit of branding on the stem too. Elsewhere, in terms of aerodynamics, Colnago has paid attention to the frame's frontal area with a new head tube design. 
The oversized top bearing allows for the fully internal cable routing and smooths out the profile to a more hourglass shape over the V3 RS's fatter shape. It also means the V4 RS can run a standard round steerer as opposed to the V3 RS's D-shaped steerer. Carl Nargo says that the V4 RS's head tube has been made more compliant, so they might be aiming to improve the balance of front end stiffness and ride feel. A lighter fork integrates into the front end and allows tire clearances up to 32 millimeters, which we saw Pogaccia put to good use in the Tour of Flanders earlier this year. Speaking of tyres, the team uses Continental's GP5000 STR model for most road stages. From what we can tell, the riders seem to be fans of the 28mm size, and given the time that the team has invested in its equipment choices, we'd suspect that this setup is tubeless for the lowest rolling resistance. Envy's SES 4.5 wheels will be chosen for the majority of stages, though the team has access to the deeper 6.7 for the fastest stages or the SES 3.4 when the race enters the mountains. The team's bikes use a full Shimano Jura Ace group set, which marks a major shift for the team who used Campagnolo group sets in the past. Pogaccia is a racer who seems to have serious FOMO, so we'd bet this bike will be at the pointy end, even in stages that aren't really crucial to the general classification. BMC's Team Machine has been out for a fair few years now, but this aero race rig has been treated to a brand new Campagnolo Super Record wireless group set, so the AG2R team is definitely one to watch. The new group set has some very interesting features, with the most noticeable being the lack of the thumb shifter. But that's not where our eyes will be trained. We'll be focused on the drivetrain as Campagnolo has copied SRAM's homework by reducing chainring size and then relying on a 10 tooth cog to provide the top end gears. Will we see the AG2R riders using larger chainrings that aren't available to the public? Now, we saw this happen with SRAM-sponsored riders in the early days of Red ETAP access, so it just wouldn't surprise us. But the reality could be that the riders simply opt to use their old crank sets with 12-speed 53-39 tooth chainrings. Ben O'Connor has been doing just that in the pre-tour races, so the rest of the team might follow the Aussies' lead. Campagnolo has also moved to a wireless system, and there's not a rim brake in sight, so it is quite the change. But the bike is more than just the group set, and the team machine boasts some really interesting aero touches. The integration of aerodynamic bottle cages, which will fit standard bottles, cleverly solves the real-world problem of how to carry fluids on a road bike without spoiling the aerodynamics of the frame set or compromising practicality. As with most modern road bikes, the cable routing is fully hidden away via an integrated front end, while the head tube is super skinny to help it slip through the air. BMC has given the frame some very angular tube shapes, and the seat stays are tucked well down at the rear end. Wheels also come from Campagnolo, and providing the riders with their crucial power data is a power to max NG. While Mark Cavendish might not feature in the punchy opening stages, there are plenty of opportunities for the Manx missile to do something very special this year. Get his hands in the air just once and he will have surpassed the legendary Eddie Merckx for the all-time number of Tour de France stage victories. And seeing as this will be his final Grand Boucle, the record-breaking victory would be a truly fitting way for Cav to bid adieu to the race which has given him so much. His Astana Kazakhstan team rides the beautiful Vilia Falante SLR, an aero road bike that features soft lines and a striking paint job that makes it very easy on the eye. Vilia never released any specific aero claims when they released the bikes. The only promise was that the bike is very fast in both the wind tunnel and the real world. But given that Cav strolled away to take a dominant victory on the final stage of this year's Giro d'Italia, the Falante SLR isn't all show and no go. The build is also a very interesting one. Astana has been sponsored for years by French wheel brand Karima, 
But then, one fine spring day, select riders started being spotted on Head's Vanquish RC Pro hoops. The reason for the mid-season change isn't actually that clear, but the team seems to have adopted a split approach, using head wheels in some stages and Karima in others. Tyres for all stages are the Vittoria Corsa Speed, though the riders seem to be on a mix of tubeless and tubeless. The team runs Shimano's Jura Ace 12 speed DI2 group sets with the now Pro Peloton standard electronic shifting and hydraulic disc brakes. Astana is a team that buys in its own Shimano group sets, so there is a little room for the mechanics to fit upgrades such as the SLF motion speed system oversized pulley wheels. Quite apart from looking fancy, they are said to reduce drivetrain friction, and in a mad sprint to the line, it might just make a difference. Throw in Astana's absolutely stunning paint job, and I think you've got probably the best looking bike in the Pro Peloton. Do you agree with me? And if you don't, then I'd love to hear what your favourite bike is and why in the comments below. I should warn you though, you'll do well to change my mind. If you want to check out some of the best 2023 Pro Team tech, then have a look at this video. Remember to subscribe to see the rest of our Tour de France videos and if you want to see them before anyone else, click the bell icon too. We'll see you next time.